Hi everyone, it's AJ. I am here today with an updated backing and finishing video. This one is highly requested because the last time that I made one of these was much earlier in my tufting journey and I have changed a lot of things I do, I've experimented, and I have found a resting place for now that I'm really happy with. I'm going to be demonstrating three different methods. The first of which is what I think is the most affordable and easy option. The second of which is the most durable option for very long lasting rugs. And the third of which is the best of both worlds method that I now use on most of the rugs that I sell. First things first, let's talk materials. For adhesives, there are two that I use and am most familiar with here in the U.S. The first is Robert's 3095 Carpet Adhesive from Home Depot. The pros of this adhesive are that it's fairly affordable and tends to be well stocked, which makes it easy to get your hands on. When it dries, it doesn't harden, so it creates a finished rug that is very malleable. The major con I have is that it isn't a very strong primary adhesive. You might find that you can pull some of the yarn fibers out if you pull hard enough, and I'm just generally worried about the longevity of rugs made using this as a primary adhesive. The next adhesive I use is AAT1132 from Bond Products. This is a synthetic latex rug compound that is incredibly strong. Using this as a primary adhesive means your yarn fibers are locked in place. I have a lot more faith in the longevity of this as a primary adhesive. The cons, however, are that it is more expensive, though it does last a very long time, and it dries firm, which could be a pro or a con depending on how you look at it. For the rest of the materials, I will be demonstrating variations using some kind of backing fabric and twill tape combination. Twill tape is often sold at craft stores, but I get mine in large spools on Amazon. It comes in all kinds of colors and sizes. All of these demos will show me using white twill tape because that's what I had on hand. I now lean more towards using this thicker black tape. It matches well with my backing fabric of choice and it also hides dirt over time. For hot glue, I use Gorilla Glue Sticks, which are great. These are usually sold at craft stores as well. Finally, for backing fabric, I will be using both the backing fabric and action back options from Tuft the World in these demos. You can also experiment with other fabrics of your choosing as a backing fabric. I want to take a moment to tell you more about Tuft the World, the sponsor of today's video. I know some can be wary of tutorials featuring products primarily from the video's sponsor, but I can assure you that my love for Tough the World extends far beyond the context of this ad. Tough the World has been my one-stop shop for all things tufting related, all the way back to my first purchase of their starter kit two years ago. Tough the World is where I got my trusted AK1 cut pile machine and where I continue to purchase tufting fabric for my six foot frame and all of the high quality rug wool I use for my rugs. My favorite product of theirs these days are the carpet carving clippers, which have seriously upped my sculpting game. Check out Tough the World and use code MAGIC15 for 15% off your order at checkout. All right, let's get started on what I think is the easiest method. The reason I say that is because the only adhesive I use for this is Robert's 3095. You'll notice that I am outside, which is my preferred way of gluing because this adhesive really does not smell great. I'm saturating all of the fibers really well with both a spatula and rubbing it in with my hand. And then I had a crazy idea to see if I could just use the wet adhesive on the back of the rug as the adhesive I would use to stick my backing fabric onto it. This was inspired by the fact that I really don't like spray adhesive and I've been having a hard time getting my hands on the Roberts 007 spray adhesive that I typically use. So I tried this out and I'm really happy with the outcome. I'm using a fairly light amount of pressure on the inside and a heavier pressure toward the outside, which I recommend using gloves for because the glue does kind of seep through the fabric a bit. But now that it's all dry, you can see that the fabric is really nicely secured to the back of the rug. Now I am just cutting around the perimeter 
so that I can bind up the edges. As I mentioned before, Robert's 3095, when it dries, it remains malleable, which allows me to do what I call a waterfall edge, which is where I fold over the fabric and allow the yarn to kind of splay outward. That way when you look at the rug from a side view, all you see is yarn rather than tufting fabric. Now please excuse the poor quality of the remaining clips here. I like to do my hot gluing in front of a TV, but here I am just folding over the edges and hot gluing them down. Now in order to cover this raw edge, I'm going to be taking this twill tape and gluing it around the perimeter of the rug. I first focus on the outer edge where I place the twill tape almost covering a little bit of the yarn so that I can ensure none of the tufting fabric will be seen. And now I'm going over this curve and you can see that as I'm focusing on the outer edge, the inside is sort of starting to ribbon a little bit, but once I'm done focusing on the outer edge, then I will go back through and sort out the ribboning effect. Now I'm going through and adding more hot glue to secure the rest of the twill tape down. And here you can see that with the ribbon that happens, what I do is basically just pinch little parts together to create a place where the twill tape can just kind of fold down. You do that just by kind of pushing the twill tape and gluing it until you reach a point where it can't flatten anymore. And then you kind of just pinch and tuck. And here is the final look. The pros of this approach are that it's affordable and fairly accessible. It also is very malleable. This final rug can be folded, which could be helpful for packaging. And then the cons, of course, are that it only uses Robert's 3095, which may not be the best option for longevity. For this second option, I had to glue inside because it was raining, so I opened the windows and removed all little good boys from the premises. Okay, now we can get gluing. So I was a bit worried about using this adhesive inside, although in hindsight, this adhesive, AAT1132, probably smells the least offensive out of like all other adhesives I've tried. Although I'm no chemist, so I have no idea if lack of scent directly equates to no toxicity. So I guess I'm just erring on the side of caution. This adhesive is a lot thinner than Robert's 3095, and so I like to kind of spatula it onto the lid and use that as a sort of easel while I saturate all of the fibers on the back of the rug. You'll notice that I have blue painter's tape around the perimeter, and that's because this adhesive dries very hard, which makes it very difficult to near impossible <laughs> to fold over the edges if you've place glue beyond the edge of the rug. Now I'm applying this Action Back secondary backing fabric onto the adhesive I just laid using another layer of adhesive. I found that both of these layers are necessary in order to get the fabric to really stick down. This is a fairly difficult approach to achieve by hand because it's just a bit tedious and requires a lot of working this adhesive into the fabric to make sure it sticks. However, this is an incredibly durable way to back a rug. I tend to like this approach for large area rugs that I hope will someday become family heirlooms. If you've ever looked at the back of carpet, underneath the carpet, it looks very similar to this because it's made to last forever. I typically don't use this approach for small rugs, but this rug was a gift and I knew that it would be going in a bathroom with really heavy foot traffic and potentially some wet feet, so I thought I would give it a try. You'll notice here that this approach creates a rug that is fairly firm and not so malleable. As far as the rest of the materials go, we're using our same Gorilla Glue and Twill Tape, but we are going to apply the Twill Tape a little bit differently for this rug. Now because I took the AAT1132 all the way to the edge, that makes the tufting fabric really hard to like fully fold over in order to achieve a waterfall edge. I will admit I haven't perfected this process, but because I can't really get a nice waterfall edge when I use this method, I have chosen to glue the twill tape right up against 
the perimeter of the yarn and then I go through and trim down the tufting fabric so that I can just pull the twill tape over and glue that part down. This ensures that from the side of the rug you won't be able to see any of the tufting fabric and instead you'll see a little bit of a cleaner line of twill tape. Some of the yarn is sort of splaying outward so from the top of this rug you won't be able to tell that it's not a perfect waterfall edge. Overall I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm also very confident that those fibers are not going anywhere. And here's the final look. This rug has been very well loved by my partner, which is why the twill tape is a bit dirty. The main pro of this approach is that it's incredibly durable and long lasting. And then the main con I have is that I just can't quite get that nice waterfall edge that I can get when using Robert's 3095. All of this had me thinking, how can I have the best of both worlds? Take the things that I like from both of these methods and combine them into one new method, which led me to this final approach, which has become the way that I have finished all of my rugs since. I knew I wanted to use AAT 1132 as my primary adhesive because it's the strongest, but in doing so, I decided to leave about a half inch border around the edge, which would ensure that I would still be able to achieve the waterfall edge that I'm looking for. All right, now we are back outside with Robert's 3095, which I'm using kind of as a secondary adhesive, but first I'm measuring out the backing fabric that I will be applying after we get gluing. So I basically decided to use Robert's adhesive as both an adhesive for the perimeter and an adhesive to apply my backing fabric with. So I essentially just went over that one inch border that was formerly not adhered or glued and I applied the adhesive and pulled the tufting fabric down to kind of create that waterfall edge that I was looking for. I actually found that this was a bit easier to just use my spatula and apply adhesive on top of the tufting fabric while also pushing it down into the glue that I had already applied. I just concentrated a lot of the adhesive around the perimeter to make sure that got nice and secure and then I added a bit of glue on the inside. You can also use a spatula for this. And then I just applied my backing fabric onto the glue like I did in the first method and just lightly pressed it down but then used a little bit more pressure toward the outer edge just to make sure that had a nice good seal. Once the glue dried I went through and cut down the backing fabric so that I could cover that raw edge with my twill tape once again. Now I already demonstrated this twill tape gluing method in the first demo, but I wanted to show one more time just to kind of emphasize how I am laying the twill tape down almost covering about a millimeter of the yarn just to really ensure that the tufting fabric won't be visible at all. And any places that the tufting fabric is starting to peek through, I go through with more hot glue and try to smush the twill tape into the yarn fibers so that you'll never see any of the tufting fabric and what lies beneath the fabric remains a mystery. And then you'll also see here that I am pinching the twill tape and pulling it so that it can lie flat. And here's the final look. I am at a point in my tufting journey where quality of the product is super important and I want to make products that last and this method really does that for me. I feel very confident that the primary adhesive used is going to hold on to those fibers for many many years to come. I'm not using any spray adhesive which I love and overall it just has a really sturdy and high quality finish to it. That is all for today's video. I hope you learned a few things. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. But in the meantime, good luck on your projects and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!